Everybody knows PC gaming can get expensive, especially when you start looking at mechanical keyboards and high precision gaming mice. But a company called Havit has made this bundle where you can get a mechanical keyboard and a gaming mouse together for about 50 to 60 US dollars, which sounds like an amazing deal, but is it actually any good? That's what we're gonna find out right now. The bundle comes packaged in an all black cardboard box that says hello. Inside we've got a user's manual, a little support contact card, a key removal tool, a detachable wrist rest, the mechanical keyboard, and of course the gaming mouse. So the keyboard measures 433 millimeters long, 125 millimeters wide, and about 35 millimeters thick. And the entire thing is just black, but it does have a really thin silver line around the outside edge and a white Havit logo just above the arrow keypad. Now, one of the first things that I noticed with this keyboard is that it's really flexible. Now, I think that has to do with the fact that it's completely made out of plastic, although the website states that it has a metal faceplate, but I don't know, I don't really think that it is. It feels like plastic to me, but I don't know, maybe it's some kind of thin metal and I just can't tell. But it's super flexible. If you press down on the frame, you can actually see how much flex there is in the keyboard. And that's not something that I normally find with a lot of keyboards that I test. So I just wanted to mention that. And the effect seems to be present regardless of whether or not you have the adjustable feet deployed on the bottom. So. Um, just keep that in mind in terms of build quality. Another unusual thing that I noticed on the keyboard is these silver screws that stick out right above the number keypad. And actually there's another one on the other side sandwiched between the escape and F1 keys. It seems weird and kind of out of place. I don't know, I don't normally see stuff like that on keyboards, but it doesn't really get in the way or affect performance or anything like that. Underneath there's some adjustable feet and some soft rubber pads to help improve the grip. And there's also a couple of cutouts or notches on the bottom where you can attach the wrist rest if you wanna use that. This is a real mechanical keyboard and it uses tactile clicky switches that behave similarly to Cherry MX Blues. The tactile feedback and click sounds are definitely there, but the key presses, in my opinion, don't feel quite as smooth as genuine Cherry MX Blues. There's no dedicated multimedia keys here, so you're gonna have to use the alternate functions on the F keys in order to control any of that sort of stuff. But on the plus side, they do give you full N key rollover anti-ghosting. Now let's talk about the gaming mouse that comes in the bundle. This is definitely on the larger side, at least compared to what we're used to seeing right now in 2020. It measures about 132 millimeters long, 68 millimeters wide, and about 42 to 43 millimeters tall. And it has this really strong and pronounced hump in the middle, which made it difficult for me to grip um, with a claw grip style, but palm gripping was a lot better. So I just given its size and shape, I think it's gonna be a really comfortable mouse for people with larger hand sizes, whereas people with smaller hands might struggle a little bit with it, so keep that in mind. There's a total of seven buttons on the mouse. There's two side buttons or thumb buttons if you'd prefer to call them that. There's the scroll wheel which works as a button, a DPI adjustment button, a lighting control button, and the main primary left and right click buttons. These main primary click buttons actually feel nice and crisp and responsive, but I found that these side thumb buttons are really mushy feeling and not all that easy to use. On the bottom, the mouse has some very basic low friction feet and the optical sensor with a DPI range up to 4,800. So that's not exactly the crazy high numbers that we're used to seeing in 2020, but 4,800 DPI in my opinion is good enough. It's more than I would ever use. So as far as resolution goes, I think this is gonna be just fine. Both the keyboard and the mouse have RGB lighting and you can use key combinations on the keyboard to control it and there's a lighting control button right on top of the mouse that you can use to control it on the mouse. But there's also a software application that you can download from Habit's website. But it's, I don't really recommend doing that because it's really kind of not good. It's kind of bad actually. It's one of the worst softwares I've had to use. It was buggy and glitchy and not great. And on top of that, it's really annoying because you actually need separate software applications for the keyboard and the mouse. You can't just control everything from one software app. It's kind of ridiculous actually. So for that reason, I would just recommend avoiding the software altogether if you can. Um, just use the key combinations on the keyboard to control the lighting. That works fine. And the mouse actually has its own separate uh, DPI adjustment and lighting control buttons. So you can get away controlling the mouse with the lighting and the sensitivity without ever having to use that software at all. 
I played some CSGO and a little bit of Overwatch with this setup and the keyboard actually did better than I was expecting. It performed really well for a keyboard at this price point, although it was a little bit on the noisy side. I guess that's to be expected from a mechanical keyboard with blue clicky switches, but I still think it was a little bit noisier than other keyboards with blue switches that um, I've used. Now, as far as the gaming mouse goes, it was a different story. For some reason, I just felt like I couldn't ever adjust or adapt to it. My aim was always off. Um, it just didn't feel comfortable for my claw grip style and those feet on the bottom are really grippy actually they're supposed to reduce friction but I almost feel like they're doing the opposite although to be fair I'm used to mice with um, high-end PTFE low friction feet these are definitely not those but I don't know for whatever reason just the size shape weight and the combination of those feet on the bottom and some other factors like my grip style I just couldn't get the mouse to work well for me um, it's unfortunate but it is what it is so is the Habit Mechanical Keyboard and Gaming Mouse combo actually worth it? I think that it can be, and that's only because this gaming keyboard is actually a good mechanical keyboard. And as a bonus on the side, they're throwing in a gaming mouse. It may not be the best gaming mouse, but it's enough to get you going. If you're an entry level user just getting into PC gaming, this is a good option. Or if you're coming from membrane keyboards and you wanna go for an upgrade to a mechanical, this is an affordable way to get into that. And you can always upgrade this mouse down the line if you want to. I would just make sure you're picking this up at the right price. I've seen the price fluctuate a little bit. Try and pick it up for under 60 bucks, and I actually think it's it's a decent deal. I'm going to put the purchasing links down in the description for anyone that's interested. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. There's a whole lot of new stuff coming really soon. See ya.